Hi guys, good morning. Uh, my name is Allie from Maine's Confetti Quail Farm. And this is going to be an answer to a question that was posted um, after the previous videos that we have been discussing different mutations and different crosses. And I thought it would be good to just jump on quickly and give you a visual answer to this question so you know how to apply it if you are using the visuals or visuals similar to what I'm showing you um, in our videos. So we talked uh, about, we gave examples of um, the cases where you have a mutation, we'll say an, a dominant mutation, that is uh, the, that the bird is homozygous for. So let's just say we're gonna work with Mancharian and we're gonna cross that to Pharaoh. We've talked about how the percentage or approximate percentage of offspring from that cross will end up being 100% a heterozygous form of that gene that that parent bird, that one parent bird is homozygous for because the offspring will, will always grab one copy and then Pharaoh from dad, for example, and then they'll be heterozygous for that mutation. So um, when we talk about a cross between two birds, let's say Pharaoh, and let's say, um, we'll say a Pharaoh, mm, no, let's use Manchurian, or I'm uh, sorry, Italian. If we're crossing, Italian to Italian. How is it, how do we figure out the approximate percentage of the offspring based on that cross? Because two of those birds that we're using are going to be heterozygous for a particular gene. So you guys, if the visuals that I'm showing you right now don't jive with how your brain works, you can look up um, Punnett squares and that may be more in alignment with you and how you wanna look at things. But if you are sticking to the visuals similar to what I'm giving you, let me show you how we can work through that to figure out percentages when we're working with something like this. So here's an Italian dad and here's an Italian mom. This is different than working with a feral parent and a homozygous uh, mutation carrier like a Manchurian mother. So what we can do simply is grab a piece of paper and what we're going to do is we're going to list out the different uh, scenarios that those chicks could grab, okay, genetics wise. So we'll say the first one, um, we can have a baby that grabs Pharaoh from mother and Pharaoh from father, okay? This fawn gene is not homozygous in either one of those parents. So the baby may or may not grab either one from mom or dad. So let's say in this case, they're just gonna grab a Pharaoh and a Pharaoh. So we can write that down as being the first possibility of what that offspring ends up with. This is gonna be backwards for you guys, but I'm just abbreviating one copy of Pharaoh, one copy of Pharaoh. And I'm gonna take this slow, so bear with me. Okay, the next scenario would be that baby grabs a Pharaoh copy from mom and does grab the fawn copy from dad. So genetically, that would be an Italian as a possibility. So we'll say Pharaoh and one copy of fawn. Pharaoh, fawn, Italian.
The next scenario The next scenario is the same thing, only switched parent-wise. So I think we said Pharaoh from mom, Italian from dad last time. This time, that baby can grab the Italian from mom and a Pharaoh from dad. So they'd end up with the same thing being an Italian, but they just got those genes from different areas, different parents. So Pharaoh and a fawn equals Italian again. Then the last scenario that we can end up with is that baby grabs the fawn gene from mom and also the fawn gene from dad. and ends up being Manchurian. So these are all of the options that we can get as far as what we're hatching out from a cross where both parents are heterozygous for the fawn gene, okay? So now, to figure out the percentages, this is just what I do, but to figure out the percentages, we will look at this and we have four, four options for those babies to end up being. What, they have to be one of these four scenarios. So already we can see 25% are gonna be this, 25% are gonna be this, 25% are gonna be this, 25% are gonna be this. So right now we know 25% are going to be Pharaoh from that cross, approximately, and 25% are going to be Manchurian, approximately. Since we ended up with two different scenarios that produces Italian, we're gonna end up with approximately 50% of Italian offspring from that cross, okay? So you can do this on any visuals that you make, um, as long as you're remembering that the offspring is going to grab one copy only from genes that are on a particular locus, right? And they may or may not grab it if that parent is heterozygous for that gene, okay? And if there are other, if there are no other mutations, it's always going to grab copy of Pharaoh. That's how we're presenting or how we're gonna understand the information there. Always going to grab Pharaoh. So if you guys have further questions about this, let me know. But I did want to um, do just a quick chat about it to, to explain that because we hadn't talked about those scenarios before when we were using our visuals. So that's it for now. I am gonna jump back on though and we're gonna cover our next topic. Okay, so I'll talk to you guys soon.